Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 78, we will continue our journey of caching topologies by looking at another type of caching, which is called a replicated cache. And so in our journey so far, in lesson 76, we saw the use of a single in-memory cache. We also saw in the prior lesson, number 77, a more of a distributed cache or client server cache. We also have replicated in process caching and also a near cache hybrid. And then in lesson 80, I'm going to wrap all this together and kind of looking at some criteria for how we can choose the right type of caching technology or topology. In this lesson, let's focus on replicated or in process caching. Now, like the other lessons, I'm going to use Apache Ignite uh, to uh, kind of illustrate uh, some of the coding so we can actually see this in action. Um, I chose Ignite uh, for several reasons. Um, one, it's open source, and it also supports a variety of platforms, including both Java and C Sharp. So let's take a look at replicated or in-process cache. And so with a replicated cache, unlike the distributed cache we saw in the prior lesson, here, the cache of data is all contained within memory, very similar to what we saw in Lesson 76 on the single in-memory data grid. However, the difference is here we have a client library where all the data is kept in sync, and so it's duplicated or replicated across different service instances or different types of services, all tied together through these client libraries. Um, using a proprietary protocol where there's typically handshakes that occur in between these. And so that first service on the left-hand side knows about the other two. The one in the middle knows about the two and the first and the third. And the one at the end on the right-hand side knows about the first two. If any updates are made to this cache on any of these three services, the other two will be instantaneously updated to reflect that update. And so the idea here with a replicated cache is that while we're duplicating the data, we don't have to go to an external source, such as we saw with the distributed cache in our prior lesson, to get the data. Now, the top four kind of caching technologies that support a true replicated or in-process cache are Apache Ignite, Hazelcast, Pivotal Gemfire, and also Oracle Coherence. And so these are primarily uh, the four. A replicated caching is different than mirroring within a server. Because in this case, I don't hold any additional data other than that cache, for example, in our example, of names of customers. And so let's actually take a look at what this looks like from a coding perspective. Unlike the prior lesson that we saw, with the distributed cache, we don't need to start an external server like we did because there is no external server. And so this is what the code would look like in each of the services. And so first we add the various libraries that we need, in this case Ignite Core 2.7 at the time of this recording, um, or any sort of jars or DLLs that you need in addition. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new cache configuration of the names, very similar to what I did in the first lesson that we saw, number 76. But in this case, notice I set the cache mode to replicated. Now, in lesson 76 on the in-memory data grid, the single in-memory data grid, I set the cache mode to local. Here, it's replicated. That tells Ignite that this is going to be a replicated cache that needs to be the same cache across multiple instances. Now, I created new Ignite configuration, and I set that client mode to false. Again, the reason I do that, everybody, is to tell Ignite this is not client server mode. In other words, there is no client to this cache. So this is my own cache, very similar, again, to Lesson 76. Now is where it differs, because now I start Ignite in every instance that comes up. But notice the cache mode shows replicated. And so what happens is I get or create cache, and I pass in that configuration, which then, if we look towards the top, points to that replicated named cache. In this case, it's going to be names. Those are the names of all of our customers. So now watch what happens here. 
Let's get a customer ID from the request. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the name. So let's take a look first of all. Uh, get a customer ID and then I'm going to get the new name from the request. And so I want to change, let's say, my name, Mark, to William. So now in this case, I'm going to update the database like I did before with that customer ID and the name. Once I get that commit, the very next thing I do is a cache.put of that new customer name. Now at this point in time, when I do that cache.put, all other services and all other instances that contain that same named cache are automatically synced asynchronously behind the scenes when I do that cache.put. Um, there are options in certain caching tools or technologies to allow what's called a sync put, which basically is a blocking wait until all other replicas have confirmed that they've received that information. I will have to say I've never used a sync put. Um, I've always just used a put. Uh, this replication is dependent on a lot of factors, uh, including the cache size, the update rate, uh, the replication latency, but generally it occurs anywhere from a tenth to a hundredth of a second to be able to replicate all other instances. And so that's kind of the difference uh, between a replicated and a distributed cache and how each of those work. So for more information, I'm very excited to announce the uh, release on February 25th of a new book uh, that I've written along with Neil Ford called The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. Very excited. We've been working on this book for several years. Um, right now is the time of the recording prior to February 25th. Um, you can actually go to that link and get a pre-release and early release viewing of that book. It's the first four chapters. But the book will come out on February 25th. Also, uh, Software Architecture Monday, where all these lessons are housed, um, is another great place to get more information about software architecture and microservices. Um, every other Monday, I do another lesson in software architecture. Um, I also offer private training classes that I can do for your company. Uh, just if you go to that link there, you'll see the training classes and the agendas for both software architecture as well as microservices architecture and design. If you're wondering any sort of public type of events I'm at, you can go to my upcoming events page, uh, list all the conferences and public trainings that I do um, both in the United States, Europe, and also in India. And so this has been Lesson 78, Caching Topologies Replicated Cache. And we have one more lesson, number 79, looking at another kind of caching topology, which is kind of a hybrid combining both distributed and replicated together called a near-cache hybrid. So we'll be taking a look at that um, in two weeks in Lesson number 79. And my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.